some of the things that I share can be controversial. Some of the things that I share can be disrespectful or am I going to diminish who and what I am? No. And that is something that I am willing to risk because I honestly, I don't care. When we take things personally, we think it's an attack on our worth. And so we are also afraid of maybe voicing our own truths. We're afraid of voicing our boundaries. We're afraid of voicing and even sharing who we really are. Let go of lo kyakenge, let go of what will people say, what will people think, because that's their opinion, it's not yours, and it has nothing to do with you. They're gonna have an opinion either way, so you might as well take it or leave it. You have to know what your boundaries are. I am not willing to let anybody else's opinion dictate how I view the world and how I approach the world. Hello, hello there, friends. Welcome to another episode of The Brave Table. And I'm your host, Dr. Nita. And this is your oasis, your destination to be all things a little bit more brave in your actions, in your relationships, and in your life. And I have a question for you. Do you take things personally? Well, if that thought has ever arised, you have arrived. And whether this is the first time that you have landed here or this topic lands for you and resonates for you, perhaps now you've come to the right place. And today our solo cast is all about diving into, well, why do we take things personally? And some of the reasons why and what we can do to stop taking these things personally. And I kind of want to just get into it a little bit because in reflecting the last, honestly, five weeks that I have been abroad and been abroad with family members. I, for those of you just tuning in, I, along with my amazing co-pilot and husband, decided to brave the frontier of taking our kids long haul to India from the States. And so we spent three weeks in India, three weeks, uh, excuse me, two weeks, two weeks in Dubai. And it was such a whirlwind. I feel like I'm still kind of vibrating from the amount of stress and strain it took on my nervous system because we were seeing family, we were seeing my in-laws and, uh, while I love them so much, you know, things are, things are so different. And honestly, I had to even rewire my communication system because there were so many things outside of my control and if you are one to not only spend time with your family um, and you maybe enjoy spending time with your family or maybe you don't and you dread it. And every time there are questions that keep coming up and they're asking you about your career, they're asking you about when, you, when you're going to get married, they're asking you about when you're going to have another kid or when you're going to have your first kid and, um, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can hear and I can imagine that it can only feel daunting. And I think for so much of my life, because I was so used to being the good girl, being the good daughter, being the elder daughter responsible, you know, the, the martyr syndrome and the martyr archetype where you want to do good, you want to be good, you want to be recognized, you want to have all of the validation. And so when you go back to where your family is or for instance, your husband's family, uh, it can bring up many, many things. And I think one of the biggest things that tends to happen for when we take things personally is we think it's an attack on our worth. And I notice this even with, you know, some of the cousins and the, and I'm going to be very careful with the language that I use. But some of the relatives, when we would have and interact with, you know, cousins and relatives around, that the women had a per particular, there was an expectation and it was an unset expectation. And, you know, in the East, there is an unset expectation. The women are, are meant to be taking care of the kids. And it's almost this dual expectation that now in the modern East, you know, you're only, you're going to be able to cook and, you know, get everything ready. And you're going to be able to also 
be with the kids, clean, uh, and, you know, just basically be everything to everyone. And it's exhausting. And we don't realize it takes that mental toll not to, you know, add on some of the other obligations and expectations. It's more communal and it's more relational, meaning that you are living in generations of households. And there are these expectations to still be the good girl, to still have this, you know, obedience and this reverence and love and acceptance from your elders. And I realized like that is no longer me. I realized it so vividly that my dynamic with a lot of, you know, these, these elders and, um, and people that I completely adore and admire is just so different than how I used to be in my 20s and even in my early 30s. It is just so different now. And I don't know if it's because my BS meter is very, very, you know, low. I have zero tolerance for for BS anymore. Or maybe it's just, you know, now entering my 40s, I'm just like unapologetic AF where, you know, this is who I am. And, and I'm not trying to say this to be disregarding for or disrespecting. That's that's not what I'm saying, but you have to know what your boundaries are for you. And for me, I am not willing to let anybody else's opinion dictate how I view the world and how I approach the world. It can be very different. And, you know, if they take things personally, well, you know, I, I can't I can't change that. We can have a conversation about it, hence brave conversation. Um, but know that, you know, the first thing to really bring up to the surface is if it's affecting you in a particular way, what story, what story have you made it out to be in yourself? Like, what is, what does this mean? What meaning are you making in your mind? about this particular scenario, a comment, etc. And you know, this is a this can be a habit. And this can be a dynamic that you set forward in a relationship if you and and these d- dynamics don't don't shift and change. It's kind of like you go back and see your family during the holidays and you revert back to, you know, the 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 14 year old fighting with your older sibling or your older brother, or, uh, you know, those dynamics then go back. And I see this even with my elder aunt and uncle and their siblings, and they still squabble like they are teenagers and they are like in their, you know, sixth decade of life, six and seven decades of life. So it's fascinating to me. And it's not all that uncommon because we do revert back to the dynamics, whether it was dysfunctional or not, when we are around people that we care about or when we've had layers upon layers upon layers of conditioning and perhaps even healing. And so understanding what your triggers are will also help you to stop taking things personally. And this was so evident in some of the dynamics that I was able to witness because we were able to uh, so graciously host many of my extended family and cousins in India. And it was so great to have, you know, the cousins play together. My kids met their cousins, you know, and actually remember them for the very first time. I know my daughter's very young, and my my son now understands what cousins even mean. And so it was just beautiful to have that because we, you know, living here in Texas, it's like I grew up with so many of my cousins and I know my husband actually lived with many of his cousins. So we have a different dynamic. We have our soul families here, but it's not like you're not seeing them every weekend. And so this was just so beautiful to actually witness, even though with all the chaos, even though with all the messiness, even though with all the extended fights, and the disagreements that we had, 
it was beautiful to witness the many levels of generations that we are still able to have. And I know that's rare and I know that that is definitely a privilege, but it's one of the things that I took away from this trip really valuing, you know, valuing our sacred connections with our elders and valuing the wisdom and, you know, the wisdom that they bring. And I, the, the other thing that would come up is the fact that this judgment is looming. And so when we are talking about, you know, taking things personally, we are also, you know, afraid of maybe voicing our own truths. We're afraid of voicing our boundaries. We're afraid of voicing and even sharing who we really are. Where I noticed many times there were certain relatives that didn't want to have certain conversations at the dinner table because they felt like it was inappropriate or they felt like if the other people in this, you know, in in this example, elders, would know the truth of who they really are, they wouldn't be accepted and they would be judged. And, you know, I'm not trying to win the award for (laughs) best daughter-in-law. I'm not trying to win the award for, you know, uh, how much I can do for my children at the expense of my own mental health and at the expense of my own uh, wrecking my nervous system. There are things that are non-negotiables for me, and that is I'm going to take that 10 minutes and I'm going to try and meditate in the morning. And that, you know, even if my kids are running around, that is my practice. And if I get two minutes in without them running around screaming or interrupting me, I think I've, I've won for that day. And many of you know that I savor my chai ritual because that's probably one of the only times, and I was doing this almost daily where I would make my chai and I would crush the, uh, you know, the cardamom and the cloves and the ginger and the fennel. And I can see why, you know, chai is such a sacred ritual because I would see my, my father-in-law, he would make his own chai. My mother-in-law would make her own chai. Uh, you know, my, my bua, my aunt, she would make her own chai. Like everyone had their own specific rendition. I'm like, I get it. This is meditative. This is like, you know, where you have your sacred practice, you're pouring into yourself. And my mother-in-law likes black pepper in her chai. And my father-in-law likes a lot of ginger in his chai. And my bua likes only fennel in her chai, you know? So, and I like all of it in my chai. So I, I, I can understand and see where even in those five minutes, you're actually taking the time to be present. You're taking the time to smell the aroma. You're taking the time to crush your, crush those herbs that have meaning for you, that nourish you and how beautiful that is when we can actually fill our own cup, literally, figuratively, emotionally. And then perhaps when we're fully resourced, we're not really taking things personally. And also the, you know, next thing that I noticed is when we're around family members and the closest people to us, we have to stop making assumptions that they know everything and they know context. They may not know the context of your life. They may not know that you're taking a year off. They may not know that you and your partner or husband are on a break right now. They may not know that, you know, whatever is going on with your child They may not know that you might have a health condition, that you might be gaining weight or losing weight. And I know it's probably the most painful thing when you go to a family event and they're saying, oh, you know, you've lost a lot of weight or you've gained too much weight or you're too dark or you're too light or you've got to be out of the sun or, you know, whatever thing that can actually really trigger us and and allow for us to take things personally. And this too, friendships, this too, cousins, this too, relatives. And when someone is perhaps making an assumption, maybe you want to ask, like, what are, did you mean to say that? Or, you know, what is that, where's that coming from? You know, don't be afraid to ask for clarity. Don't be afraid to ask, is this what you really meant by that? You know, when we don't speak up 
and clarify. And I know this happens in so many households. In fact, <laughs> it's a running joke in my family that if somebody says something wrong, some someone takes it personally, someone takes it the other way, and then they don't talk. How many of you have family and relatives where, you know, something is said at the dinner table and then someone is afraid of confrontation, someone, another person is afraid of speaking their truth. And so then they're not sharing what's actually going on in their mind. They're, you know, shoving it under a rug. They're pretending like everything is okay, but then they have this big resentment. And then maybe they're going to distance themselves from that cousin for a while until it kind of blows over as, you know, time heals supposedly. And then pretend like everything is okay. And boy, this used to drive me nuts because guess what? In true fashion, I would be the savior. I would be the mediator and I would be the one bringing people to the table and trying to rectify and repair for the two parties where, you know, if someone maybe said something or maybe you just heard it wrong or maybe they were having a bad day, can we actually seek to ask for clarity? Rather than creating and, and, you know, creating scenarios in our head, oh my gosh, this is what she actually meant, or this is what they actually meant. And, you know, we, we make these stories in our minds about things and, and maybe it was something so small to begin with. Let's be brave in calling that out. And secondly, opinions are not facts, right? People will have their own opinions about the last time they saw you, or the last time, you know, I, I remember actually this particular time we were just in India and I, I bring all of my supplements and I literally have more supplements than my shoes. My sh supplements, powders, hydration packets, I mean, you name it, I have it and I'm traveling with me. I'm traveling literally with at least another bag with all of the things. And if you're a health nut too, I'm, I'm sure you are the same way. But I realize I've been traveling like this for... I don't know, about a decade. And one of my cousins this time, she said, Nitha, I remember you would, you know, you would do this a decade ago or seven or eight years ago, the last time, whenever you, you know, you, you would initially come to India and we would all make fun of you. We would all make fun of you behind your back. And now we realize like how important it is and you've paved the way for our, our health journey. And I didn't realize that. I was just living my own truth and living my what felt good for me and what felt nourishing for me. I didn't realize that this was something that, and if I knew that that was happening beforehand, maybe I would take it personally back then. Maybe I would be hurt. But at the end of the day, it's their opinion. You're living your truth you're living it out loud. You are being bold in your pursuit, in your quest to fuel you. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And everyone will have an opinion. But they're not facts about you. So let's just get that straight. They are not facts about you. And many times we can't control the narrative. We can try, we can try, but we can't control it. And so we can agree to disagree, right? And I realize in some circles, some of the things that I share can be controversial. Some of the things that I share can be disrespectful or viewed as being disrespectful because I know that certain family members won't agree that I'm very outspoken and that you know, a women's tone should be at a certain level or a certain octave. And this is by all means, very true. And I am the loudest person in my family on both sides, on my Filipino side and on my Indian side. And, and there are cultural nuances that I just don't abide to. Now, in the presence of those people, am I going to diminish who and what I am? No. And that is something that I am willing to risk. I'm really willing to risk being judged because I honestly, I don't care. You know, it's this let go of log kyakenge, let go of what will people say, what will people think. 
because that's their opinion. It's not yours and it has nothing to do with you. They're going to have an opinion either way. So you might as well take it or leave it. And I'm so proud to say, you know, from many of my relatives who were in very toxic and abusive relationships, many of them are coming out of that. And I know that I had my walk with that over a decade ago. And I know that I've shared many episodes where and how I was able to walk out of a very tragic and toxic and abusive relationship. And now you just can't keep me quiet. I am going to advocate for the oppressed. I am going to advocate for the underdog. I am going to advocate for people who may not have a voice and may not have activated their throat chakra yet so that they can actually speak their truth. I will advocate for them. And that will be the risk. So no, I will not take that personally. In fact, that is one of the things that I will truly fight for. You have to know what you're willing to fight for. You have to know what you're willing to risk. And I think that we're living in a time where we are so afraid of being censored. We're live in from our family members, from the closest people to us. And then we create these ripple effects because then it's society and then it's global political issues. And then it's humanity as a whole. But it starts with what are we willing to tolerate in our living room? What are we willing to tolerate or not tolerate within our family dynamics? And there is a way to do that. There's a way to respect your own truth and to share your own truth and be okay with the naysayers. Be okay with other people taking the way that you react or the way that you protect yourself because no, you're not going to have another drink or no, you're doing you're being sober curious right now, or no, you're not going to, um, wait for them to show up in whatever way you're going to protect you, but also at the same time, figure out what feels good for them. Because while we are talking about being boundaried and having boundaries, I have, and I've realized the true reverent, reverent and, 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 respect for the difference of opinions that my elders have. And there are things that I've realized that, you know, we just won't talk or bring up. There are specific topics and I'll just say things that we, I, I, I chose not to, or if they are brought up, with certain family members, certain elders, I know exactly when to close it up because I know that they have such a strong, bold truth that if we do get into it, it will definitely turn into an argument. It'll turn into a fight. And we know, and I know one of the biggest things is politics in, in that part of the world and with, with my family, because there are certain truths that I just don't, I, I don't agree with. Uh, at all. And that's okay. We can agree to disagree and we can love each other from afar and say, okay, I'm not going to try to change their opinion. Um, unless they they can be met with open dialogue, which I haven't been able to see. So I'd rather preserve the love and preserve, um, what we have. And again, you know, and I talk about this in my brave conversations course as well, you have to know when to pick your battles. And you have to know when to own up what you bring to the table in your own truth. And nobody can take that away from you. Yet getting frustrated when we feel like we're being judged or getting frustrated when we feel like we're not being heard or getting frustrated when we feel like things are being misconstrued. Yes, that can hurt. That can hurt. And I'm not going to sugarcoat that. But I want to bring this up in a roundabout way. What are you willing to fight for? What is your non-negotiable that no matter what, this is my time? Kind of like the chai. (laughs) The chai, sacred 
time and sacred moments that we have. But I was so, I guess, impressed and just fell in love with having this beautiful time with our family, even though it was probably one of the hardest times to parent because everything just went out the window. Everything. Everything. And yeah, I think coming back from all of that, it's it's been, you know, honestly a crazy couple of weeks, but I've also been able to really spend this time focusing on what are the things that are going to really nourish me right now. And as we are in the winter season, whether it's winter or perpetual summer, wherever you are at, or maybe you're listening to this in the middle of July, who knows, what are you wintering in your life? What is kind of going or hibernating? What is ending? And I know we've been talking about necessary endings in the last few weeks. And I feel like I am just at this crossroads, you know, personally and professionally where I kind of want to try new things. I want to explore in different ways, but in order to do so, I have to let things, let people, let projects, let those things go. And one of the biggest things I've learned just from listening to all of you and some of the emails that you write and some of the people that either you have sent me or tagged me or said, hey, look at this or check this person out. I've learned so much from this community. And I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart that we can have some of these brave conversations. And, you know, we're just doing the best that we can with the tools that we have. And we're constantly ever evolving and we're constantly ever shifting and flowing and growing. And it's not going to be perfect. We're not going to have it right. And can we be brave to make mistakes? Can we be brave to say, gosh, I effed up. The other day I was, I was so, you know, (laughs) not resourced. I was, I had, I was running on lack of sleep. Both kids were sick. Um, and I think probably even more so jet lagged. It was, and, and we've been going through, you know, the kind of our, our, our winter weather, and it, it doesn't get as bad as, as some of the, you know, other uh, weather places. But when it gets bad here in Texas, it seems like our, everything kind of shuts down. And, you know, my daughter and my son were just like up at night, really late. And I just, I mean, I lost it and I lost my shit. And I was like, and I said something that like, you know, I regretted and just later on, you know, in the morning I woke up and I said, you know what, you know, mama loves you, right? And you know, mama can make mistakes too. And I want to encourage you both that you, your mistakes are okay as well. Mama had a bad day yesterday and mama was in her feelings and it's okay. Sometimes we have to have big feelings and we we scream and we yell and sometimes we say mean things, but you know, I still love you. And that's what I shared. And, you know, this art of when we make mistakes, the art of repair is so important. And it's something that I'm reparenting myself with every day. It's a big conversation in our household. How can we repair with our children? How can we repair with ourselves? And you don't need to have kids, honestly, for this, but even when you make a mistake, even when you say something you don't mean to your friends or colleague or friend or um, coworker, boss, elder, someone that you love in your life and you're like, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that or oh shit, I was just feeling, I was just having a bad day or F, it slipped. But I didn't really mean it. Do they love you enough to... So you know what? I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hold you in this container where you can say whatever you want. And I'm not going to judge you in this. I'm not going to take it personally because I love you so much. And if you did say something, are you brave enough to say, you know what? I effed up. I'm so sorry. I took it out on you. It totally wasn't you. It was totally me. And I was going through a funk and I was going through this really funky time and I, I'm sorry I ghosted you or I'm sorry I, I, I took it out on you. It was not about you. 
can we be brave to have those conversations where the other person doesn't take it personally and where maybe you don't take it personally because you know and you have enough reverence and love for that person that they're just going through the motions. Just like my kids forgave me. They're like, yeah, mama, it's okay to have big feelings. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I taught them that. And I'm, like I said, I, I don't have it perfect, um, not much of the time, but what I do know is that we can be okay to suck at something new and we can be okay to be brave at repairing because that's one of the biggest ways to honestly stop taking things personally, that maybe they were just having a bad day or maybe you were just having a bad day. And context is everything. And I think many times it's so easy to take people out of context because we need something or someone to blame. And many times we don't want to take personal responsibility for our actions, for the things that we say. And it's so easy to blame somebody else. So with that, I want to just close out by saying, you know, other people's needs are important too in this because we are having relationships and being relational one with the other. You know, we can do all of our work by ourselves and stay on a mountain and not hang out with people. I know people who are just like, I don't like hanging out with other people. I'm just going to be a hermit. You can do that all day long. And that's why I have so much respect for Many of my friends that, you know, I've, I've met you and, you know, you live in joint families, you live with your family members, you live in three generation households where you need to be okay regulating yourself. When something happens, you, you're not going to hold it in and you're not going to have a grudge. You're going to process through it, walk out, do whatever you need to do, clear it, and then go back in, relate with your other family members. You're not going to abandon them. You're not going to, you know, ghost them or, or not see them because you're living with them. And how beautiful is that? So I'm going to challenge you all to call somebody that you haven't had relations with in a while. Let them know you were thinking about them. Maybe call a family member, a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, an elder, someone that perhaps you want to just check in with. And, or maybe sending them an appreciation note, because this is how we get to be more brave when we're actually doing things out of our comfort zone, when we're actually being okay in discomfort and being brave to not take things personally. So with that, I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. I know that your time is valuable and I hope to add even more value in your life, in your relationships and in taking brave action. So until next time on the brave table. I need to work with the parents. We need to work together. We need to heal. We need to, we pass on our wounds just as much as we pass on our, um, our eye color and our hair color. So <laughs> it really is important that we do that work. And so for me, it was very important to just talk about that mm. um, and to do it 